Meta has released the version 3 of their Dino model, which is a self-supervised vision model, representing a major leap in general purpose visual representation learning and we are going to check it out after installing it in free google colab this is fahad mirza and i welcome you to the channel please like the video and subscribe as that helps a lot so what exactly is this dino v3 model let me explain in simple yet technical words so this model is built on a vision transformer or Conf next architecture, it is trained on 1.7 billion unlabeled images using self-supervised learning that eliminates the need for human annotated labels. It also uses a student-teacher framework enhanced with a novel technique called as gram anchoring to stabilize dense feature learning during high-resolution training. If you look at this video, from Meta's website and I will drop the link in video's description. This gives you better understanding. With just 7 billion parameters, Dino V3 produces rich, high resolution feature maps that serve as a frozen vision backbone as we just saw, meaning it can be used directly without fine tuning to achieve state of the art performance across diverse dense prediction tasks like semantic segmentation, object detection and also video tracking. I will also be talking a bit more about its architecture but for now let's go to Google Colab and then get it installed and see how exactly this works. If you are following along just go to colab.research.google.com, sign in with your free Google account and then just go to runtime. From runtime change the runtime type to T4 GPU and really code of Google to give us this free GPUs. Now in this Google Colab demo, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you how you can do sort of feature ma mapping or pattern matching with uh, Dino V3. So we are trying to find visual correspondences, essentially matching similar parts between two images, whether densely or sparsely um, populated. Densely means pixel to pixel across regions and sparsely means key point to key point. So in the first cell, all I'm doing, I'm just importing this stuff. Google Colab comes um, pre-installed with a lot of stuff as you can see here. So I'm not going to install it all again. And if something you know gives you error, you just go and install it with pip. So let's wait for it to get installed while that happens. Let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are iGent. iGent is the world's first multi-agent workforce desktop application empowering you to build, manage and deploy a custom AI workforce that can turn your most complex workflows into automated tasks. And let's um, then download the model. For the model, I'm just going to go with WitL model, which is specifically very good at feature matching. So it is downloading at the moment and they are very lightweight uh, models. Okay, so it has given me the error here. Okay, so what this means is that I would need to log into hugging a face because what happens is, for example, if I go here and if I scroll down, these are the models. You would have to first go in and then log in with your hugging face account and accept the terms and condition. And then you would also have to log in through CLI in the notebook. Uh, so let me do that quickly. And the model is now being downloaded after I logged in. And that is all good now. And we have also loaded the model and you can see that it is showing us that the embedding dimension or size is 1024, whereas patch size is 16. Patch size is the size of the small non-overlapping scales that an image is divided into before being fed into a vision transformer like Dino V3. And patch size of 16 here means that the image is split into 16 by 16 pixel blocks, each treated as a single input token by the transformer. And that reduces res resolution and computation. Okay, now next up, what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, give it this wrapper, which primarily is processing one image at a time and also getting L2 normalized feature because that is the requirement of this model. And then we can simply run this. In the next step, I have loaded these images. Let me show you these images, what they look like. 
let me plot them let's go here and that is going to show you the background foreground the original image and all that stuff first time it takes a bit of a time because it loads the images so on the left hand side these are the two images and then this is the mask of those images look how accurate that is and then this is a foreground and this is a background and this is what we are going to uh, match and now we have to define the patch and mask and the patch is what i already defined so let's run this that is done and now on the basis of that patch and mask we are going to extract the features of both the images and that is done next up we have to do this pre-processing of the images don't get too scared with uh, this code so all this is doing so i'll just take it take you up so what this is doing it is just taking each tensor of patch feature which i already explained it's just a 16 by 16 and then giving it a shape d h and w where d is the feature dimensionality and h and w are image dimensions in the number of patches that is all this code is doing and it has quickly processed all the three or four images and now by using this python code you can simply match the features and you see it's a very simple python code where we are taking the shape matching it one by one on that uh, k have hw which i explained earlier and once it is matched let's display those images all i'm doing this you know i'm plotting those images uh, one by one so let's do it and there you go this is what it has shown so this is exactly the you know pattern which it has matched between those two images so all the grass and all that stuff it didn't show it is just showing those two donkeys um, in a very very fine way and all the you know patches match with each other and finally you can also show um, the exact matching or basically primarily uh, what you would say here is you want to establish the correspondence between those two similar yet different images so let me run this and there you go you see it is just matching these two donkeys and it hasn't really done anything with the grass or anything it's just with these donkeys and all those um, matching tells you that so very accurate model i think this dino v3 has evolved a lot uh, if you compare it to the previous version so pretty good i hope that you enjoyed it let me know what do you think i'll be covering it a bit more around its architecture and maybe i will see if i could generate an a uh, gradio demo on top of it because that will be easier we don't really want to worry about all these tensors and shapes please like the video and subscribe to the channel as that helps a lot thank you for all the support